He is exactly like you in every way. Except one-eighth your size. I shall call him... Mini-me. It's gonna get a little weird today. Have you ever wanted a tiny version of yourself? Hi there, welcome to the Teeny Tinker's channel. I make ball jointed doll and craft related content. But today we're actually going to make a different kind of doll. Yeah, I've been making ball jointed dolls almost exclusively for the last year, but today I wanted to try again my hand at making an art doll. And yes, ball jointed dolls are a kind of art doll because they are made by artists, so art doll. But I want to do a one of a kind clay doll. I've made clay dolls before and fabric and clay dolls, you might recall the Kevins or Art Cat. However, I've never made one with an armature and that's basically what I'm going to be trying to do today. So join me in making a mini me art doll. All right, let's get started. Okay, let's start by looking at the materials we're going to need for this project. So obviously I'm going to need polymer clay, the aforementioned armature wire, which looks like this, some peachy fabric, and also some polyfoam or floral foam, I think this is called. Also, I have some yarn instead of stuffing because I think it's gonna work better. All right, let's start that by making the armature. Obviously, I have zero idea what I'm doing and I am slowly figuring it out. There I am figuring it out. I do not know what I'm doing, but I am trying something new, so I'm going to use one of my Teeny Tiny's Saturn as sort of a base. Typically with a ball jointed doll, I would make what's called a blueprint where I would draw out the joints and stuff. And I mean, I probably could have done that with this doll, but instead I'm just going to use Saturn as a base to figure out approximately how long the arms and legs should be. From there, I use more wire to connect the two and just twist it around to make it extra strong. This wire is surprisingly easy to work with. I believe it's actually jewelry wire instead of actual armature wire, but by doubling it up, I was able to use it as an armature. This is looking a little bit like that scene in the Blair Witch Project, but make it metal. I'm not super sure what's happening. I am trying to make sure all the sharp edges are curved in and flattened though. So using my handy dandy hot glue gun, I'm able to make sure that the arms and the legs are secure. I'm sure that there's a way you can twist it to make it stronger and not burn yourself like I do, but this worked really well this time. So if you're not super good with armature wire, I'm going to recommend this. Here's where that yarn comes in. You thought it was for hair? It's not for hair. It's for wrapping around the doll. I thought that this would be easier than just doing stuffing, and I was right. It spread the fluff over the wire a lot more evenly, and I was able to build it up where I wanted it built up. And now that my Michelin Man is ready, let's give her some skin, because all of her guts are showing and it's a little bit graphic. Also much like the Blair Witch Project. So while I'm cutting out this body and stitching it together, which took way too long by the way, I just wanted to remind everybody that I do actually have a second YouTube channel and it's called Teeny or Tinkers. I post a lot more casual content over there, lots of crafty things, much like this, but less edited. So if you're into that, definitely check it out. But anyways, I don't typically hand stitch the bodies, but I thought it would be easier for this one because the way the armature is done and then the way I wrapped it in yarn, it would have been a lot harder to sort of pre-sew the body and then slide it in. I would have had to leave a big hole anyways, so I just decided to do it this way. It definitely gives it a creepy cute look. This blanket stitch on the edges is a lot, but I mean, it all gets covered with clothes anyway, so it doesn't really matter. One mistake I did make is that I definitely cut the body pieces too small for how much fluff I had put on here. While it did all fit in, it was a bit overstuffed, and I'm a little bit worried about the seams over time. As well, she ended up being a bit slimmer than I meant to make her. I really was trying to go for a chunkier body. I mean, it turned out okay anyways. All right, it's time to sculpt the clay parts. I have a ton of videos on my channel already that go over how I sculpt parts in clay. 
If you want the most detailed version, I would recommend checking out the My Best Polymer Clay Doll Ever. It's a full series on my YouTube channel where I make a polymer clay BJD who I've named Polly. Her final video will be out super soon, but in those videos I show how I make things like head, hands, feet, all of that. This is just more of that. Although the piece of floral foam I've used inside this head is absolutely minuscule, and the head in general is really small. This is the smallest clay head I've actually ever made, besides the Kevins of course, and I'm actually a little bit mad because it came together really quickly and I think pretty well. Like why? I spent so long on Polly's head getting it the shape I wanted and it just felt like my hands just made it happen this time. Of course she's not perfect, but like, I don't know, she looks really good and I'm just like surprised at myself, I guess. The last six months that I've spent making Polly, I've actually gotten so much better at clay sculpting and at sculpting in general. And I feel like in general, the features are coming together smoother, everything's looking more the way I want it to. This head, I was going for something really kind of cutesy and chibi. I have a tendency to sculpt baby faces or younger faces. I don't know, I'm just a sucker for a cute face, I guess. I was trying to loosely follow my own facial features, but I figured I could just paint most of them on. Painting and detail work is where it really comes together anyways. I've also been watching a lot of doll customizers on YouTube, seeing what some people are able to do with dolls like Monster High or Barbie or even Rainbow High is super cool. The idea of taking kind of a generic base and turning it into something completely your own, awesome. Not every custom needs to be a complete, fully sculpted doll. You can do so much using basic bases. That's kind of the concept for what I'm going for here. Okay, so besides the body being an armature, the hands and feet also need to be on wire. This is basically how I plan on attaching them. I figure I can twist the wires together at the end and then use a bit of hot glue or super glue to kind of close up the fabric around it. This should prevent it from fraying and hopefully reinforce the feet and hands. I was also secretly hoping that I would be able to get her to stand by herself, though since her head was clay, I wasn't too sure how well this would work. I was really hopeful though. While making her feet, I basically just decided to give her a sort of nub feet. I wasn't sure what kind of footwear she was gonna have and I thought it might be silly to spend way too long making these detailed little toes only to cover them in boots anyways. Hands are actually becoming one of my very favorite things to sculpt in clay. Although doing ones this small was extra challenging. I made a pair of hands in quarter scale for Polly when I was making her and this was way harder. I actually had to remake the fingers on the first hand four separate times, trying different methods of attaching them. Each of these fingers has a wire through it because they are so small and so fragile, you want something to reinforce the clay. This itty bitty silicone tool came in clutch though. Alright, so soon we'll be able to customize her, but before that, let's check out your customization for Doll of the Week. All right, so this week's style of the week comes from Maddie Doll Seattle. I don't know how I missed this cutie in the tags before, but I mean, I don't really see anything in the tags anymore. She shared these photos of her super cute teeny tiny clover, and I love this mint green color. Thank you so much for sharing Maddie Doll Seattle. Remember, if you would like to be featured for Doll of the Week, post on Instagram, and you can use the hashtags, but I haven't been seeing anything in them. Instead, I more see the photos I'm tagged in. So if you can tag me, go ahead and do that. I am considering opening a Discord for photo sharing, sales, etc. Let me know if that's something that would interest you. But for now, let's get back to this video and customize this doll. While I still don't love doing wigs, I have improved and I'm definitely a lot more confident in approaching them. So Saturn's head is basically the same size because I used it as a base. So I'm just going to go ahead and make the wig on her. I decided to both make the base and attach the hairs using my handy dandy hot glue. 
Guys, I really love hot glue. Wood glue or wood glue or craft glue definitely works better and gives a better result in my opinion. However, you do have to wait 24 hours and I did not have that kind of time this time, so hot glue it is. So while I don't have time for a wig that will take 48 hours, I do have time to take a minute and tell you about my idea for this giveaway or giveaways. Basically, I thought it would be really fun to have three possible giveaway prizes, each unlocked by hitting a goal. So the first goal, of course, is hitting 1K subs on Teenier Tinkers, my second channel. And the prize would be a 3D printed teeny tiny of the winner's choice. My second goal is 10K on TikTok. And then of course the prize would be a full blank Luna in blossom pink. And then finally, my last goal is 10K subs on Teeny Tinkers, this channel here. So if you're not already subscribed, now is a good moment. And the prize for this is a one of a kind Luna full set in Robin's Egg. Plus, if I hit all three goals by the end of the year, that's the end of this year, 2023, I will be doing bonus prizes. The giveaways wouldn't begin until early 2024, so we definitely still have time to make those goals. So you and I will make the goals, but right now I'm making this wig. I'm not gonna lie, this pink yarn is what inspired this project. When I saw this yarn, I was like, this came straight off my head. Like, this is the exact color of my hair. I could not believe it. It even has the same kind of luster to it, the right shine. Maybe that's just because my hair is so dry and sad, but I mean, <laughs> it works. Honestly, this wig also looks super cute on Saturn. I really need to make her a wig. She had a resin wig, but when I was cleaning up my office one day, I dropped her and her wig shattered because it was made of the resin. So I'm thinking I should make her a space buns wig. Although that might be a little bit ambitious for me. All right, time for a chop. I started trying to chop her hair with this razor and realized it was kind of pulling off her head. My hair is pretty blunt, so I went in with some scissors and gave it a blunt cut. Then went back over the edges with the razor, which produced a much nicer result. Also, her sitting around with no shirt in pink striped pants with a pink bob is fully a vibe. Also, as much as I would like to pretend my roots don't grow out and my hair just grows in pink, the roots are there, and I feel like it would be a disservice not to include them in this wig. I use some black gouache paint to brush the color into the parting line and then used my finger to smudge it out. The same gouache paint, but in peach, is what I use to paint the head, hands, and feet. The body is made out of a peachy fabric color. I started painting it and honestly, it was coming out really patchy. I was not super pleased with it. I definitely need to get some acrylic paints because the gouache just wasn't cutting it. It was giving 2007 doesn't know how the foundation match and is using CoverGirl Mousse foundation. You remember those days? Oof. Painting while holding a small piece is really difficult and I was suddenly inspired to use the armature wire to prop the pieces up in a piece of styrofoam. This worked really well and stopped everything from dripping and stopped paint from rubbing off. So, I mean, not the intended purpose of the rods, but it ended up being super duper helpful in this case. Once that was dry, I went in with my chalk pastels and more gouache paints and nail art brushes to finish up the face up and give her all of my features. I used the chalk pastels to add all of the base layers I usually do to my BJD face ups using yellow, pink, and blue in strategic spots to make it look more alive. With the base layers on and dry, it's time to actually give her a face. This included adding fingernails, including pink nail beds, as well as brown eyes, some puppy dog eyeliner, thick dark eyebrows, a lot of blushing over the nose and cheeks, and a heckin' lot of freckles and beauty marks. Honestly, it feels weird giving a descriptor of myself like that, but it was also weird painting my own face onto a doll. I had to cut out so many spots where I was referencing my own face in the viewfinder because it was a lot of me just looking at myself. 
At this point, I actually started feeling like, maybe she'll come together. Maybe this will be okay. Because up until now, I was just kind of wondering how things were coming. Because up until this point, she was just a clay head and a fabric body, not even put together. So seeing her slowly shape up and look more like me was kind of a sigh of relief. I used two different shades of brown in her eye to try and give it a bit more dimension, as well as adding black in for the pupil and for the eyeliner. I am so glad I went with a chibi style because otherwise this girl would be so uncanny valley. I don't know guys, what do you think? Does she look like me? Alright, time to add some white dots. White dots in the eyes add a certain level of life to them. With BJD eyes, they're inset and they're typically domes, so they catch the light naturally and give a shine. When you're doing a customized doll, the eyes are flat and you need to add that manually. All right, the face is done. Let's make her some clothes. I was really thinking it would be super fun to make her clothes based on an outfit I actually have so that we can truly be twinning and she can truly be my mini me. So I had to go through the fabrics I had and pick out stuff to make an outfit very similar to what I have. Honestly, it's not my favorite outfit I have, but I have a rainbow striped shirt, I have a pair of black skinny jeans, and I have an oversized black jean jacket. Not my most quintessential rosy outfit, but it is an outfit I have. So while I was making the jeans, I didn't actually have black denim, so I used a bit of blue denim and then just used some more gouache paint to kind of tint them black. Not enough paint to make them stiff, but just enough to make them look actually black. It's not the exact rainbow fabric from my shirt, but it's pretty close. Since I didn't have black denim, I went ahead and made the jacket out of felt. I do also have a pair of purple shark slides. Do you remember the TikTok shark slides? I have a pair of those and I have some in doll size. Go figure. So not only, so not only does the outfit match, the shoes match as well. All right, so a full day's worth of work and all components are ready. So that of course means it's time to see how accurate I was able to get my mini me. I just have to go change into my matching outfit first. All right, so maybe she looks a little bit like me. Okay, to be honest, I was not fully sure with all the components separated, but dang, she came together. And she definitely looks like me. My whole family loved her and thought she was so cute and funny. I mean, can they say the same for me? But let me know what you think. If you're already subscribed to my channel, thanks so much for subscribing. And if you're new here, I hope you like the content and consider subscribing. Also, be sure to check out my other socials so we can hit those numbers for the giveaway goals. As always, I hope you have a fantastic day.